Hey Acers, welcome to Ace Role Playing Games. And this week's Albeit Late installation for Simply Game Master, Learning to Game Master. And this is supposed specifically Learning to Game Master Savage Worlds. But I'm hoping that I also in these series teach you, in this series of, of videos, teach you how to Game Master in such a way that you can apply that to whatever role playing game you want to play. Because I know that there are other game systems out there. And I am a fan of exploring and looking at other game systems. I still play other game systems. I even play 5e. But the thing is, is that you need to be able to be open-minded and just apply the principles that you learn from Savage Worlds Game Mastering to others. Now, the next thing I wanted to say is... Welcome to all of you new viewers. This is the ACE Role-Playing Games channel. ACE stands for Achieve, Create, and Entertain. And we are the ACE Role-Playing Games Clubs. And we are starting to pop up in cities all over. Right now, just Utah. But we're, the goal is to get them all over the world. Get them anywhere there are teens who want to play a game and have fun together. So today's video is going to be a continuation of the combat video that we talked about last time. So we, we talked about action cards last time. And if you remember, <clears throat> there's, you, you'll deal the cards and then you set, you take, everybody gets to take an action or a free action on their turn. And, and, and I'll get to that in a second. But remember, ties and numbers are resolved by the suit. It goes in reverse alphabetical order. So spades, hearts, Diamonds, clubs. So, um, also remember, and we talked about Benny's before. So you see how all this builds on every video on the last one, and the and the ones before even. But when you talk about getting a joker, if a joker is dealt to a player, that player gets a plus two to their to all of their actions that turn <clears throat> to their to their attack rolls, to their damage rolls, they get a plus two. Or to, if, if they decide to do a test or something that round. If they decide to do a multi-action and, and encourage them, as the game master, if your players get a joker, encourage them to jump forward and do a multi-action. Do at least two actions. Because that, that plus two negates the minus two for each one of the actions. And voila, you've got a flat roll, but you have, and you have no penalty. But you can do multi-actions. Now, and encourage them maybe even to try three, because it's only a minus two to all of them. So, worth a shot. So with that said, let's take a look at... Oh, and I, I will also say, if you are Delta Joker as the Game Master, then you also do get the plus two. And you do get an extra Benny. One extra Benny. So, just remember to... Let those bennies flow and let the cards flow. Um, there are edges, and we'll, we can get to those in later videos, but there are edges and other things that affect how the cards are drawn. There's even a hindrance that even though it leaves the player the player's character at a lower action initiative in the round, it actually speeds up the speed at which they go through the deck and increases their chances of getting a joker every turn. And that's the one place where they don't have to take the lower card. So that's really one of the things that I would have you pay attention to. Now, just as a side thing, just as a game mastering, you know, give you give you something here. Don't try to stress about knowing all your players' traits and hindrances and attributes and things like that. Don't stress about it. Make them take keep track of it. If they want to have you acknowledge their quick hinder, their quick edge that gives a, another card if the card is five or lower or is a five or lower, then they need to call you out for it. And that's the same for giving bennies. If somebody in your group does something cool, go ahead and and let your players know that you're open for them to point out where you might have missed giving a benny. That's uh, that's the thing that'll make your game mastering just so much better because. Game mastering and, and role-playing game playing is a conversation. It's a conversation between you 
and your players and let that conversation flow. I, I even let them give me game mastering advice. I even let them remind me of rules that I might have forgotten because, hey, I'm trying to juggle 12 bad guys and and three big bad guys and trying to figure out what they're all. No, let them help you by reminding you. So let's talk about actions. An action is it you on an action basically you can move and then you can perform a regular action during any point at any point during that movement so if you want to move half your distance let's say we're actually using maps and movies here and we have six squares that you can move you can move three fire your weapon and move three more or you can move six and fire your weapon or you can fire your weapon and move six Whatever it is, you you can do, or or you know, fire a weapon, cast a spell, do a psionic attack, whatever kind of a action it is, um, a test or a support. Those are actions. Now, like I said earlier, you can do a multi action, which means that each additional action that you take or that your characters take is at a minus two, cumulative. So. If I take two action, first of all, they need to declare multi-action before they start rolling their dice. Second, they need to make sure that they understand that taking a multi-action gives a minus two to both parts, not a flat roll and a minus two. It's a minus two, minus two. And if they take three actions, it's minus four, minus four, minus four. But sometimes you got to try it. And if they are going to be gung-ho and cinematic about it, toss them a Benny. Give them a chance to re-roll that. I mean, last night, I ran a Deadlands game. And there was one guy who had a stack of six Bennies. He went through all six just to get a success on a fear check because it was a pretty bad fear check. So that's why I'm like, let him do it. So... um. Sometimes complex actions do take more time. So sometimes the game, as you as a game master might have to say, actually um, digging through your backpack to find that torch that to replace the one that just got knocked out of your hand and went out, that's going to take you two rounds. And so they're going to have to, they're going to have to do stuff. Now, there are free actions like speaking a short sentence or two, but monologuing that would be an action. Um, Moving up to the character's pace. Oops, I just bumped my mic. Sorry. Anyway, moving up to the character's pace, that one is also a free action. Falling prone is a free action, but it takes it takes um, some of your movement to get back up. So you won't be able to move as far. Um, and you can speak and drop an item on, on your turn. You can basically do free actions like you can when you're shaken. I mean, I'll, I'll get to shaken later. But um, some free actions occur automatically at the beginning of the character's turn. And like um, there's a free action of what do you do when you're shaken or stunned? You can roll your you can roll your spirit roll on shaken or your vigor roll on stunned to try and recover from that. So that's and these rules apply to your your NPC villains as well. And, and you also have reaction kind of things where like if you're trying to resist being stunned or something like that, you know, the, the flashbang just went off that the bad guys threw in and now you have to resist being stunned, then you um, get to do as many of those for free as you want. And your character, your player characters can do so as well. So just don't limit them on that. When it comes to movement... And movement, let me take a little tangent on movement. And this is one of the biggest flaws of role-playing games in general. In role-playing games in general, too often, especially, and this is part of the reason why I like Theater of the Mind a little bit better than Maps and Minis, is because you'll have the big bad miniature. You'll have the hero miniature. The hero will put, the player will put their hero right next to the base of the big bad miniature and will not move it. And they will just basically, 
I don't know if you guys have ever seen them. I've seen them with nuns or other things like that, but they're these dolls that are inside. They have two levers and they have hinged arms. So when you push down on the lever for the arm, it extends the arm and it drops the, the boxing glove that's on the arm. So it punches out when you click on the lever inside and you can punch them back and forth. Anyway, basically sitting there trading punches is not smart. For that matter, let me tell you that in self-defense, which I practice, trading punches is not good. There is no such thing as a fair fight. Even if you're doing a even if you're doing a duel in Deadlands and you're dealing out the cards back and forth and you have your whole card and you have your and you have your your die roll coming up, just all that, even if that's what you're building towards. You still you still have movement in most cases is a key to not getting hurt. And that's the thing. In real self-defense, you want to keep moving. You want to keep yourself from sitting there and just punching that guy in the nose while he punches you in the nose. And then you punch that guy in the nose. He punches you in the nose. In the end, it's going to be the guy who is bigger, who is tougher, who's going to win. However, if you're smaller, if you're not as tough, but you can be faster, you can avoid getting hit. I mean, yes, does that mean sometimes giving them an attack of opportunity? Sure. But if your parry's high enough and you're doing a, you're doing a fighting McFight or something from Fighter Town even, you can still get out of their range without them hitting you or with them only doing cursory damage to you as you pull back. Or you can move around to their side and have and give and make it so it's harder for them to get to you. And that's why you gang up. And I'll get to gang up bonus in a little bit, but that's why you gang up. That's why you have two people on one. So that way, the bad guy's trying to get the one guy while the other guy's getting him. Movement is so important. Have your villains move. Have your villains do sneaky, unfair tactics. Don't, you know, don't take advantage of the rules and, and, like make a character who's got like a whole Rube Goldberg in their edges and hindrances and, and their skills and abilities and, and just make it so they can never be hit and never be hurt. No, but do show them through your actions, how you want them to behave. So if you want them to be a bad, be a person who ducks his head out, fires a rifle and then ducks back behind cover again, behind the building that's that's movement and that's using cover and that will teach the players real quick to use cover because your bad guy's not being hit because he's got a minus six to be hit because he's got full cover whereas your heroes standing out there in the open like somebody at high noon they are getting hit And they're, they're getting hit left and right. Oh, actually, near total cover is eight, a minus eight. So that's two down successes. Even dropping prone. If you drop prone, that gives you a minus four for cover. And we'll get we'll discuss cover and obstacles more in the later video. But it's minus two if you got light cover, like like a, a column. It's minus four if you've dropped prone. It's minus six if you have heavy covers. Three quarters of your dart of you is covered. Minus eight if you have near total cover. Like ducking around a building. That's a mine, that's a shot. And then back behind the building. Now minus eight. And that's movement. That's how movement works. That's how you get better at surviving combat encounters. And take no doubt that somebody with a machine gun a rate of fire, three weapon in Savage Worlds can definitely ruin your day. An extra with a machine gun can ruin a player character's day. So um, other things to consider are um, difficult ground, like ice or um, or crawling, or, or, um, or ice or steep incline, or thick forest, something like that, something that would cause them to trip, make it a little harder for them. 
Make it so, I mean, if you're playing with miniatures, cost two inches of movement for each movement, for each inch. Or if you're not, maybe give them a minus two penalty to reflect that they are having a hard time getting through this ground. Um, then there's hazardous moving. Um, swimming, fast moving, wherever walking, tight rope, sometimes fast roping can be. Those, you could require an athletics roll. And if it's really hazardous, have them do an athletics roll minus two. That's the great thing about that little tack on of a minus two is that it makes the thing a little more difficult. That's the reason, part of the reason why when you're doing a dramatic task, which again, we'll get to in another video, a dramatic task will be about how you can, or how you have a club pop up and it suddenly becomes a minus two on that roll. And that's that's just randomly determined, but you as a game master can put a minus two or even a minus four. I mean, sometimes you want to throw, you want you don't want them to do it or it's going to be a waste of their time. So you throw a minus eight out there or a minus 12. But the thing is, is that there are some players who will try it. So, so ha and with hazard stuff, not only can you do like a minus two, you know, like if they're, there's, <coughs> like say they're, they're climbing to try and get up to the battle or something, and they're having to do it fast. Um, or like I said, walking a tightrope, fast moving, swimming, fast moving river, whatever. Um, like Andre the Giant, when he's climbing that rope in the thing, he's got, that's kind of a hazardous climb. So he has it, at, actually, I would give him a minus four because he, I'm carrying three people. He's got only himself. But Wesley, on the other hand, only has a minus two because he's just himself and he's climbing the rope and he's got really high athletics. So if you fall, you're going to take damage. If you drown while swimming, you could take damage. Um, if, if you do, if you do succeed, if you do get a critical failure, you get a chance to still succeed, but you're going to do it with the level of bumps and bruises now, which gives a minus one penalty. So yeah. Um, jumping also is something that's going to give, get them not as far and prone is, um, prone is dropping down on your belly and then standing back up, but you can't move very far at all. So those, those are the, the types of movement. And that's probably a pretty good point for me to stop the video today is just talking about movement. And like I said, if I can just emphasize it as a person who's done martial arts and, and fought with swords and done shooting and things like that, movement is key. Movement is what gives you a better chance of survival. And so I recommend that you encourage movement by giving it to your NPCs and giving it to your villains. Make it so the players, they may be getting attacks of opportunity, but they're not doing so well because they're only hitting them for cursory damage because they're doing it too often or stuff. You know, and, you know of course, is there a chance that your villain, while trying to move away, could get hit for all the damage in the world? Yes. But that's part of the fun. That's part of the swinginess of Savage Worlds. And that's what makes Savage Worlds fun and unique. So anyway, that's what I have for thoughts on this one for you today. And again, I'm sorry this one came out late. I'm going to try and make sure that the next one next week is on time. And um, oh yeah, I, 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 I tell you why it was late. I got my new job. I started on Monday and things are going great. And I kind of figured you guys would excuse me for, I mean, like I had to go back yesterday and get my fingers, fingerprint things done again. And, you know, you know here's the, here's the card. And, um, you know, it's, it's really cool to have, you know, like my fingerprints and walking up and go, Ooh, but it was more important for me to be able to just get it all figured out, get it all taken care of. So anyway, um, I'm, taken care of now. I'm starting to do my trainings and stuff. I'm going to be doing some cool stuff that actually requires 
a secret security clearance. And so there's a lot of my stuff that I won't be able to talk about. But that's okay. That's not what we're here for anyway. We're here to talk about role-playing games, our love of role-playing games, and learning how to game master so that we can help our friends have a fun experience telling a story with us. So if no one's told you this week, and no one's told you today, I love you. You're amazing. I am so blessed to have you in my life. And you guys are awesome. Every single one of you. Whether you're a teenager or a grown-up, if you're even in my life just through these videos, you're amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you. And keep gaming for good. Talk to you later.